Join us as we travel the South Carolina Adventure Route, also known as the SCAR, which loops through approximately 1,100 miles of rural South Carolina, all on a mix of pavement, sand, mud, dirt, and gravel. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the SCAR. I'm Matt Brody, and this is Simply Must Go. Well, good morning. It is about... Wow, it's actually later than I thought. It's almost... It's like 7.45. Yeah, it's almost 8 So, it's almost 8 o'clock. We are uh, we slept in a little bit, so... Anyway, pretty good night's sleep, you know. Uh, feeling pretty good this morning. And a uh, nice day. I thought it rained a bunch last night, but it didn't. <laughs> I don't know if that was a dream or just a trick of leaves falling or something, but anyway. So I'm glad to see that everything is not soaking wet, but we're gonna get breakfast made and then uh, get on the road so we can finish up this section of the trip. All right, so while I'm over here burning the bacon, B's got all the pancakes Killing rolling. it with the pancake game. This pancake is perfect! I mean, she's not wrong. All right, we're tearing down camp. It takes me very little time to get everything packed back up in the trailer and set, so that is easy enough. Beeves finishing up his stuff. He'll be done just a minute. And then we're gonna hit the road and uh, have another awesome day on the SCAR. Our goal today is to make up for lost time, and we hope the open country roads will help us do just that. This section is mostly rural back roads lined with fields, farms, and old churches. This trail in many ways is like the Trans-American Trail, but we certainly weren't expecting to see a covered wagon on the streets. It's a little mind blowing. The rural towns and countrysides are beautiful and inspire a little karaoke. We need to get back to the Sumter National Forest in the upper portion of the state if we have any hope of making it to our destination today. Our goal is to get up to the Lake Jocassee area and make camp. It seems doable on paper, but in practice, late starts, filming, and generally traveling slower than expected have put us way behind schedule. And getting all the way to Lake Jocassee seems like a daunting task that we may not be able to accomplish. Around lunchtime, we finally hit gravel and dirt as we re-enter the Sumter National Forest. We spend several hours following the scar along the forestry roads, which are mostly graded gravel winding up and down the foothill mountains of South Carolina. We find a turnoff for a waterfall and decide that even though we're short on time, Seeing the waterfall is part of the experience of exploring this area that we don't want to miss. So, we've been driving in the mountains for a little bit and according to my GPS and stuff, there is a nice little overlook for a waterfall right here. So we have parked, we're gonna kinda, not really hike, it's probably like a 30 foot walk, but uh, out to this little overlook for the waterfall and I'm excited to see it. We're getting close, I can hear it. It's a little bit longer than 30 feet. Probably like a hundred yards, but we're getting there. Right, Cam Bear? <laughs> All right, so we found where the waterfall is. It's right down there, but there's a good out, there's a, there's a lookout for it right up here. And uh, it's very pretty. Forestry roads can vary dramatically based on where you are and the time of year, but these particular roads are fairly tame and don't offer much in the way of off-roading. This is Beeve's first real trip and he's never really been off-road before. He's eager to test his ability and the Land Cruisers. 
and it just so happens he gets his chance. We're still running a little behind, but we just found this offshoot there, which is pretty gnarly looking. Let's see what this looks like. It looks pretty gnarly. The big question is what's down there and can I turn around with the trailer? And so that's what we're deciding is if it's worth risking. And uh, I guess we just have to make the best call we can. So Beeb, you think this is worth doing? Is it worth doing? Yes. Is it smart to do? Ah, we'll find out. <laughs> we're trying to figure out who's going to go first. <laughs> oh boy. All right, we're doing this and I'm going first. I'm going to be the guinea pig and I feels like a dumb idea, but we're doing it anyway. Listen, if anything goes really bad, gravity will take you down. <laughs> and I'll pull them back up if I have to. For all my bravado about the YJ, I'm concerned about this trail. While the camera never really seems to do the trail justice, this is a relatively steep decline with large ruts. Some so large that previous explorers tried filling them in with logs to help. From experience, I feel like my Jeep can handle the challenge, but my trailer's untested in this type of terrain, and I'm worried that some of the angles and articulation needed to get through this section will prove too much for the Jeep and trailer combo and could cause it to topple over. But there's no way to know without trying. I'm super excited for him. This is his first real go around and first real test of the Land Cruiser. So uh, I think he's good. I, I'm, I'm impressed with the Jeep. She had no problem whatsoever, as usual. I love my Jeep. Driver, driver. There you go. Now straight. go keep coming you're on the log there you go go passenger passenger so this is going to be an interesting experience the um, the trail dead ends down here, there's some people camping. There's no other way out, so we have to come up the way that we just came down. And uh, I'm not at all sure that with the trailer, I can do that. So we'll see. Maybe we'll hook the trailer up to the, uh, the Land Cruiser. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, so I won't lie. Like, this section sketched me out less because of the Jeep and more because of the trailer, because there's some big there's some big angles, I guess. What are they called? Um, anyway, there's a lot of articulation. And, you know, I have disconnecting sway bars now, and you'd think that I would have done that. And I didn't, but I guess we're okay. Eventually, we hit the end of the trail and find some really great people camping down there. After a good chat, we turn around, but with the tactical decision to let the Land Cruiser's V8 pull the trailer up the trail. So this next section coming up is a little sketchy. You can see there's logs. I'm going to have to aim for the logs to get up. Um, some more logs i got to climb up. He's all articulated here. Let's see. Yeah, this is what we got to climb. And that's Cami Bear way up there. Wave, Cami Bear. So it looks like nothing, but as you can see, like people have put down logs and stuff so that they can get through. So it's it's pretty, especially up here, there's like this whole big mess of them where it really, really rutted out right there. So anyway, but once he's up that, he's mostly done until the very top. All right, you're about to hit the first log. Keep going, there you go. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Yep, straight up and up. Easy 
log. There you go. Second logs. There you go. There you go. Oh man. Piece of cake. That was awesome. I'm gonna say I was I was really impressed. Carried I carried a little momentum and it's good. To yeah, go. she did she did great. I, I was a little concerned with the open differentials on that log trying to get up it, but yeah. it a uh, little little skinny pedal and that's it. T Rex started running. <laughs> there you go. Hey, can you go left? Go left a little, Matt. Nice. We've put our rigs through their first real test and they've passed, as a team if not individually. But our detour cost us precious time that we don't have. It's late and the sun will be dipping down behind the mountains in just a few hours leaving us still with hours to go driving in the dark to find and set up camp. But our encounter with our new friends camping at the bottom of the trail has left us with the knowledge that some good campsites are nearby. And again, the hard decision is made to stop early while we have enough light to set up camp. But this most certainly means that our goals of reaching Lake Jocassi will be unattainable this trip. But luck and good fortune soon favor us. Just a few miles down the road, we discover a campsite that surpasses our expectations. All right, so uh, we found our campsite. It is this nice big open spot here. We gotta get the, uh, the rigs in place and get the tent set up, but super, super nice open spot. Check this out though. This is what every overlander dreams of, right? Camping next to water. And we're officially overlanders now, I believe, is uh, how that goes. I think we get a badge or some sort of like decal for our car that says official overlander. Anyway, but that's going to be really nice. We're going to be able to hear the creek uh, as we sleep. So super excited about it. And uh, we're going to get, we're going to, can't even talk now. I'm so excited. We're going to get the, uh, the rig set up and we're going to get uh, cooking dinner and have a good time. Ended up leveling out the, uh, the trailer just a little bit with my, my bunker traction board. So they did exactly what I thought they'd do. Easy to get off the side there, put underneath. So uh, yeah, so if you watched my video about my traction boards, uh, they did exactly what I wanted them to. All right, so I got my tent and my awning all set up. I've got the LED lights on. Everything is running through my Balder power station. I got my set fridge right here so i've got my fridge and my power to everything the battery is fully charged after all day because it's running through the jeep so it's charging uh all day and running the bat and running the fridge while we're driving and then i can just run the fridge at night and anything else i need to run so it's charging my phone it's charging uh the or it's powering the refrigerator and the lights and it'll start charging camera batteries very shortly too we are making tacos i'm cutting up some peppers we're gonna have some mushrooms. It's gonna be good stuff. So there are two ways to cook food. You can either cook it on cast iron or you can cook it wrong. Fight me. We got our fire started. We, you know, earlier we stopped on the side of the road because there was a tree that fell over and there was like a, a good chunk both busted up in smaller, smaller pieces for some kindling. And I think we're gonna be good to go. Have a fire most of the night. All right, it has been an absolutely awesome day. We got the fire going. We had a great dinner. We are gonna hang out here and chill and talk and have some fun and then uh, go to bed, wake up in the morning, and I think we've got some adventure planned. Uh, we've gotta head back in the morning to our houses. Uh, B's gotta go back to Bluffton, I gotta go back to Columbia, but 
I think we're gonna spend a few hours first thing in the morning finding some really cool trails right around here where we've camped. We saw some spots we really wanted to check out but didn't have enough time to do it tonight. So I think we're gonna do that in the morning and then we're gonna head home and it's gonna be an awesome, awesome adventure. Oh! Okay, you ready? Yeah. One, two, three, flip. Ah, <laughs> she wins it. But you know you're gonna go back and tell Kendall how crazy it was when she yeah. missed it. After a good breakfast of pancakes, we pack up camp and set out with a new goal. All right, so we've got camp all packed up and uh, we're gonna go hit some other trails and then uh, we're gonna head home. I have no idea how much trouble we're gonna get into today, but I got the trailer behind me and Beef wants to get on some funky trails. So we'll see how this goes. It should be a really, really awesome day. All right, so we found this trail yesterday, but Given the timing and the fact that we were looking for a campsite and Beeb was a little sketched out about the uh, the idea of, of me being able to get through this trail with the trailer, we decided we'd put it off until today. So we went and we found our other campsite last night with the plan on coming and trying to run this trail in the morning when we had plenty of time, plenty of light in case something went wrong. So we're going to roll up this trail and see what it looks like. He, he didn't seem to think that uh, it was too hard, but it's got a lot of hills and so it's departure and approach angles that are gonna be a little tricky. In the YJ, I wouldn't have any issues with that. Short wheelbase, super capable in that direction. But because I have the trailer, that changes everything. So we're gonna see how this goes. The big climb and tight trail meant it could have challenges we didn't wanna face as we raced the sun. So we decided to backtrack and try it this morning. With ample light, we feel like we can explore this trail in relative comfort, knowing that we are not going to be in the dark. We just found this gnarly little section of trail we're gonna play on. What the worst part of all of this is it doesn't look like anything, but like, here, look at. See, like this is knee high. Climb. It doesn't look like anything. It's so annoying. It, it just looks like a cute little path. It's kind of, it's pretty gnarly. Okay, here we go. The Land Cruiser makes it up with little difficulty. The low range V8 and lockers make easy work of the climb in the ruts. All right, so at the top of this little trail that we went to, there's, there's a grave site. It's, it's a graveyard. That is really interesting. I wonder where these are from. They have to be really old. So these graves, go back to the 1800s and early 1900s. Uh, but someone has taken care of them. They've put these flowers, these are fake flowers, so they're here all the time. So someone's maintaining at least a semblance of, look, but some of these tombstones are so old and so weathered that they're just, there's nothing there. You can't tell what they are. But this is why exploring is so cool and going out and finding trails like this, because you just never know. You'd never find this, ever unless you were just taking, taking the path 
less traveled, to quote a poem, Robert Frost, I'm educated. Unfortunately, this proves to be too much for the YJ, even without the trailer. The large articulated climb is too lofty for the open differentials. As soon as a tire leaves the ground, it free spins, leaving the tire still on the ground with no power. Essentially, open differentials send power to the tire with the least resistance, exposing a massive shortcoming in the capability of my Jeep. It's true what they say, lockers save lives. Just ask Dennis Nedry. Even with the help of my traction boards, the climb is too much, and winching up is going to be a lot of effort with little payoff. So we abort the effort and continue down the trail. Eventually we hit a large open area. The trail continues on, but it's already close to lunchtime and the Land Cruiser is getting dangerously low on fuel. So we make the decision to turn around. We pick up the trailer on the way out and hit the official route of the SCAR again until we exit the Sumter National Forest. This first section of the SCAR has been everything we'd hoped for. It challenged us, it inspired us, it showed us places and things about ourselves we didn't know were there. We felt good about ourselves, our rigs, and our experience. We'd answered a call, and there is more exploring to do, and we simply must go. Because to answer that call, that's the greatest adventure there is. All right, guys, we had an absolutely awesome weekend doing the first section of the SCAR. There's about four more sections. Uh, we may even end up breaking it out into like six or seven because we kind of grossly underestimated how far we would actually get in, in one weekend. So anyway, uh, phenomenal, phenomenal trip. Super excited. The rigs did great. The Land Cruiser was, was awesome for its first time out. The YJ did great. Wish I had some lockers maybe, but uh, anyway, it got me everywhere I needed to go. Not necessarily everywhere I wanted to go, but uh, anyway, it was awesome. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps out the channel. If you haven't already, subscribe so that you can see the next episodes coming up around the SCAR and all the things that we're doing. And uh, yeah, share this video. If you know somebody who uh, would be interested in running this trail, share the video with them. That would help out a lot too. If you're interested, I will also link to uh, Beeb's video on here because he's going to have his own content based around this as well. And until next time, God bless. Thank you so much for going with me on this adventure and uh, stay tuned for more. We'll see you soon. I hope you'll subscribe and join us on the rest of our adventure as we continue along the South Carolina adventure route. And then, who knows, even further.